I'm Jacob Lansiel. I'm Tyler Hashimoto. This is Wednesday Night Lab, Lab 2, Gaussian Beam Profiling and Propagation. So Zero. we have a diverging Zero. Gaussian beam from this laser right here. And we placed the knife at two different positions, 1 meter and 1.4 meters away from the laser with the photo detector right behind it. And we translated the knife through the beam and plotted the results. As you can see here, the beam waste is more or less at the aperture of the laser and both knife positions were behind the beam waste. So the beam comes out from the laser and diverges and because it's diverging, that means the knife position that's closer that will have a smaller beam diameter which in turn will make for a more narrow beam profile which also has a steeper slope where when it's far away the slope will be less steep and the profile will be wider and the beam diameter will be larger. So we focused the microscope right here on the very edge of the laser and we used that as the set working distance and from that we moved the microscope back one meter so it was a meter plus the working distance away and from there we placed the knife in front of the microscope right there so that we knew that the knife was one meter away from the laser after we focused the mirror on the knife. This is the setup we used for the experiment and as it'll zoom in you see the knife edge and the detector as you see here, we translated the knife edge right in front of the detector until it completely blocked out the beam, and this is the voltage reading that occurs. When we translate the knife edge through the path of the laser beam, this is what the detector will see. So in this section we found the Gaussian beam profile using the lens. And using the lens will allow us to image the laser beam from the laser. And we take the divergent Gaussian beam through the lens, and that will create a new divergent or converging and then divergent Gaussian laser beam. So we're able to see the waste. And because we set the system up in a 2F2S system, we can find the idealized waste position. And that will allow us to take a beam profile measurement before the waste and after the waste. And with that, we kept these two um, positions where we measured the same. So we got. Um, the beam diameters to be almost identical and we got the profiles to be very similar as well. In this setup we are using the same aligned laser beam and imaging it through a 200 millimeter focal length lens in a 2F2F system. This takes the divergent Gaussian beam which passes through the lens creating a new Gaussian beam. Therefore we can find the waste which should sit two focal lengths behind the lens because of the assumption that the laser aperture is the beam waste. We can then test the collimation by using a microscope to focus on the waste. We attempted to use a wedge shear plate to test the collimation after the microscope, but because the beam was not expanded enough, we were not able to get the interference pattern we needed on the wedge shear plate to test collimation. The math behind this experiment is while we're moving the razor blade across the beam, we're basically taking a step function and convolving it with a Gaussian function. And that'll give us, because we're convolving with a step function, it'll give us the integral of that Gaussian as we select each section of the Gaussian and add them up. We then find that it's very similar to the error function. One time when we were taking measurements with the photo detector, the voltage output reading kept decreasing and it was really strange and it shouldn't have been happening. And what I realized was that actually it was just slipping. So what I did is I straightened it out and I tightened it up and it got a constant reading again, so it was all good. So once we gained our beam profile, we were able to find the position where there was 84% of the power in the laser beam, and then 16% of the power. And with those two values, we're able to find the position of the knife edge, which then relates to the radius of our beam, and that's denoted W sub Z, or W of Z. And then with that, we can go into our algorithm, and here's just the slide that shows all the things we're solving for. And we're able to find the location of our beam uh, waste and the beam waste itself. For the Gaussian beam profile without the lens, we obtained the values for W1 and W2 um, from the graph, and we plugged into these equations to get W0, the beam waste, as well as delta Z, the change in Z position, measured from the same side when you were measuring the Gaussian beam profile. Hope you enjoyed lab two.